How's it going, guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, we're in a battle against Rod in the UU tier. Let me know who you think is going to win based on the team you see on screen right now. And please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. With that being said, let's jump straight into the game. And the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, Rod. So they're going to lead off with Incineroar as we let off with the Alolan Ninetales. So I let off with the Alolan Ninetales because I wanted to get the uh, Aurora Veil up straight away. I figured it'd be really useful against that team. So we are going to get Intimidated, which doesn't really matter. Um, now we can get the Aurora Veil up and hopefully we can live a Flare Blitz from this thing. Let's go for it and see. It looks like they haven't got a Defogger on the team or a Rapid Spin. No, Cloyster could be Rapid Spin, but I doubt it. They're normally Shell Smash Sweep. So they go for a knockoff. They want to get rid of the Light Clay, but fair enough. They know we can't touch them, so there's literally no reason not to go for that. So I'm going to go for an Encore now just to stop them from going for a Flare Blitz. I feel like that makes the most amount of sense. So there we go, Encore comes through. They must do an Encore, which is great as they go for a knockoff. So they're either going to switch out right now into Cobalion, if I had to guess, or they're going to stay in and go for a knockoff again, expecting us to switch out. So I'm going to go into our, um, if they go Cobalion, Donphan's probably the best Pokemon to go into. So we will draw our nine tails, and we're going to go into Donphan. Donphan, if he gets knocked off, we're going to get some chip damage with a Rocky Helmet at least, even if we lose that for the rest of the game. They do withdraw the Incineroar, though. Are they going to go Cobalion, though? That's the real question. They do go Petra Run. So Petra Run's an interesting one. So that thing can poison us, and if it poisons us, we get confused. So we've got to be really careful what we do here. We have no Steel types. We have no Poison types. We could very well get poisoned here, which is going to be very bad for us. So I'm going to go for a knockoff right now. They do go for a parting shot, which is interesting. So they don't want to get earthquaked. They clearly see this as a disadvantage, a disadvantageous position to be in. So what are they going to go into? Because if they go into the Cabalion on the knockoff, that's going to be a really good play. Because it means they're going to get a justified boost. But they still won't be able to touch us, really, even with a justified boost. Nymph comes in. What's that? The Jumpluff? The Jumpluff comes in to take an Earthquake. We go for a knockoff. Knocking off some of its HP, which is great. And that's going to get um, some, some HP gone on that, which is always nice. We could Ice Shard if we had Ice Shard, but we don't have Ice Shard. Um, so if we assume they're going to go, they won't go Sleep Powder because that's against the Smogon format rules. We are playing by Smogon after all. Um, so I think we can probably go into Glalie here. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go Glalie. I think Glalie is a good Pokemon to go into here. I feel like Glalie works out nicely because we can outspeed it with a Choice Scarf and Ice could Crash it. Maybe catch it off guard. So I'll bring Glalie in. They do go for a Substitute, which is unfortunate. So Substitute comes through. Very unfortunate for us because it means if we miss this Ice could Crash that's coming... Then we're going to be in a bit of a bad situation. So, what do we do here against this thing? I'd say the best thing to do is to go back into Ninetales and Freeze Dry. I should have probably gone into that anyway. But the ballsy side of me wants to risk the Icicle Crash. So, I'm going to go for the Icicle Crash. We do risk it. We do hit it, which is great. They probably go for a Leech Seed here, if I had to guess. Let's just see what they do first, though. They do break the Substitute, which is great. And they go for a sleep powder. So we're not playing Smogon. Never mind. Rod didn't get the message. Which is fine. You know, it's, it's absolutely fine. We can handle this. No problem. No problem. Um, let's go for... Um, that's, they go for another substitute, right? So we just go straight for a, uh, an Alolan Ninetales switch. I think that's the way to go. So we'll go Alolan Ninetales. Alolan Ninetales doesn't out, uh, does outspeed Jumpluff. So we should be able to freeze dry into Oblivion. Let's see how this plays out, though. So we get the snow warning, which is great. They go, they withdraw. So they withdraw because they don't want to risk us waking up, which makes sense. We wouldn't wake up the first turn anyway. And they go Cabalion. So Cabalion's a very good switch there. Really works out nicely for them. So what what can we do here? If we assume they're going to iron, iron head us, we go into Don Fan. So I know there's a lot of switching. There's a lot of switching. But look, I was asleep. I had to switch out. Now I'm against the Cabalion. I have to switch out. <laughs> Just how it goes, okay? Singles is a very switchy format. So they go for a body press, which is going to get some Rocky Helmet chip on them, which is always nice. And um, the Aurora Veil does wear off here, which is unfortunate. I am going to get them Stealth Rocks up now, though, because I have the opportunity, so I may as well go for it. They go for a Taunt. Those pesky... That pesky Cobalion with the Taunt. They knew we were going to go for Stealth Rock. That's a good read. That's a really risky read, because we could have gone for a knockoff there. So they probably switch out here and we're back into Jump Bluff. So I want to make the switch back into the Kaba uh, the Ninetales, or I want to go into the Blastoise for the Shell Smash. One of the two. One of the two. So let's see what we can do here. I, I think 
We can't knock it off because it'll get a justified boost. That'd be pretty bad for us. Um, we can't Earthquake. I think they definitely switch out here. So I'm going to go back into our Ninetales. Looks like they have stayed in, which is interesting, to attack as we go for a Cushel switch. Are they weakness policy, maybe? Is that why they're staying in? They go for their own Stealth Rocks. Good play. It's worked out nicely for them. They, they knew we were going to have to switch out there. And that's worked out really nicely for them. So we can Encore them now, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Encore them into Stealth Rocks. That way they can't do anything else but that, which means they have to switch out. As there's the Stealth Rocks coming through, which is absolutely fine. So now what I'm going to do is, knowing they have to switch out... We can't sell the Aurora Veil again because the snow stopped. Let's go for a freeze dry, expecting a switch here. I'm expecting either an in Incineroar switch or a Petron switch. They withdraw the Cobalion. Are they going to go into the Petron switch? The Petron switch would be ideal. Yeah, the Petron would be better because we can get some specially offensive damage off on this thing. So let's go for that freeze dry like so. Nice little bit of damage. No freeze, which is great because I don't want hacks in this game. I don't want hacks. Hacks is always a, a pain. So let's see what we can do against this Petron. I'm leaning towards the Glalie, and I'm only leaning towards the Glalie because we can't put us to sleep. So that'd be like ideal. And we can burn off some turns of um, some turns of sleep as well. So I'm gonna go Glalie because Glalie at the end of the day, Glalie, this game in particular, it's not doing anything. Like it might outspeed and KO that jump off with the ice crash if we let it, but they know we're choice scarf, so they know it's not gonna work. So we get some point stones digging into us. They go for that malignant chain, which isn't going to be able to poison us, which is great because of our sleep. And now I'm leaning towards going for that switcheroo. That's what I'm leaning towards, the switcheroo. And we're in a pretty good position here because if, if they switch out here and we stay asleep, we can still switch up moves. So I'm going to go for that switcheroo real quick because if I can switcheroo this thing, we'll be in a much better position. So we are fast asleep, unfortunately. We stay asleep. Um, and we are going to get Malignant Chain to death, which is unfortunate. So we lose Glalie early on. But Glalie had its time to shine in the last game. So I think we can let it go down peacefully. Now at least we get a free switch in on this Petrunt. And we could potentially get some damage off on their team. Their team's really well built. So I'm leaning towards the Armourage. I'm leaning towards the uh, Indeedee. I think Indeedee's the best one. Because looking at that team, nothing other than the Incineroar wants to take an Expanding Force. So I am leaning towards the uh, Ndidi. So we're going to Butler real quick, the Ndidi, like so. Get that Psychic Terrain up, which would be really nice. There we go. Psychic Surge is going to come through. And then what we can do is we can predict the Incineroar switch and we can go straight into Donphan or we can go to Blastoise. I'm leaning towards the Donphan switch because I want to get them Stealth Frogs up, that's for sure. And I want to be able to Rapid Spin. So I'm going to go Donphan. I'm going to go Donphan because they won't switch Petron in on a Donphan. To block the rapid spin because we could easily go for an earthquake and predict that. So we're going to Don Fan real quick, like so. And um, they definitely should have switched out there. They do. They do withdraw. So they are going to withdraw. Are they going to go into the Incineroar? Incineroar came in. That's that's great. So we made the right play. They do get the Intimidate off, which means our earthquake isn't going to do nearly enough damage. But at least now we get our Stealth Rocks up, which is going to limit some switches. So we get the Stealth Rocks up. We actually outspeed, which is funny. Don Fan outspeeding Incineroar. Incineroar is just so slow. <laughs> It's just so slow. As they go for a knockoff, which is going to knock off our item. But at the same time, we get some Rocky Helmet Chip, which is always going to be nice. And we don't know whether they've got boots on this thing or what. So I'm going to go for a um, knockoff real quick. Or a Rapid Spin, actually. I'm going to go for a Rapid Spin. So Rapid Spin comes through. We get rid of them Stealth Rocks on our side of the field, which is always great. We get a Speed Boost, which is even better. They go for a what? Parting Shot? Overheat. That's going to take care of Don Fan. Oh, we live in. We live in on, like, no HP, but we live in nonetheless. Uh, I kind of want to get rid of this Incineroar's item. I have a feeling it's boots, and if we can limit it switching, that'd be great with the Stealth Rocks. So I'm going to go for the knockoff. They actually stay in still, and we knock off their... What are we going to knock off here? Heavy Dew Boots. So that was a good knockoff right there, as they go for a knockoff to finish us off. So Donphan is gone. If they get the Stealth Rocks up, they are here to stay, but at the same time... They've already overheated. We could go into Ninetales now and get up our Aurora Veil once again. Or we can go Blastoise. Blastoise is an interesting one here. Because we can easily take care of a lot of their team with Blastoise. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to go into the Blastoise. They have Knockoff. They have Overheat. They have probably Parting Shot. I'm going to go for the Shell Smash. I don't, I don't care. I'm going for a Shell Smash right now. I outspeed. So I'm going to use my White Herb up. So even if they knock off, it's going to be fine. If they Parting Shot, we lose some of our offensive prowess. But it's absolutely fine. 
So let's see what we can do against this Incineroar real quick. We get that boost in our attack, special attack and speed, making us an absolute monster. And we get the Wire Herb, which is going to pop. I'm expecting a Parting Shot because they have Parting Shot on Petron. They do have Parting Shot. Which is fine. We can handle that. It's going to lower our attack special attack a little bit. But we still have that boost. Not as high a boost. But a boost nonetheless. So let's see what they do here. Are they going to go jump pluff? Would they be jump pluff with heavy duty boots as well? Petrun comes in. So Petrun's not expecting this at all. Petrun is not expecting this at all. We could have Dark Pulse as well for all they know. So this Petrun, I'm assuming, is going to stay in and go for a parting shot as well. But what do they think we're going to do? That's the real question. I'm going to go for the EQ. I go for the EQ. Let's see how much damage this does to a Petrunt. Not nearly enough damage. It's only a plus one. As they go for that Malignant Chain, are they going to poison us? They get a crit. No poison, which is great. No poison is fantastic for us. Absolutely fantastic for us. So, if we assume they're going to switch out here or Parting Shot, I think they switch out into the Cloister. Or the jump off. So I'm going to wave crash here. They, they do stay in. We wave crash. Is it going to KO the Petrun? It does KO the Petrun, which is great. Petrun out of the way. We're finally making some strides here. We're going to get some KOs with this Blastoise real quick. We do get some recoil, which is unfortunate. But it is, uh, at the end of the day, what it is. Now they go Kabalion. Kabalion's a good switch here. We can still go for an EQ. But they may terror. So I'm leaning towards the wave crash. But I'm also leaning towards the EQ. I feel like they terror, though, if they've brought this in knowing we've got Earthquake. Because they could easily bring the Jump Off in, even though they know we probably might have Ice Spinner. I don't have Ice Spinner, by the way, because of the Psychic Terrain. I'm going to go for the Wave Crash here. They actually do stay in and don't terror, so we could have EQ'd there. But nonetheless, Wave Crash still does a lot of damage. They have got the Rocky Helmet, so the Recoil plus Rocky Helmet is going to take us out. And then they probably get the Stealth Frog, so right? Body press. So that's actually worked out nicely for us. So even though we lost our precious, 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 precious Blastoise, I still think Armor Rouge can pull through here if we can get rid of that pesky um, Incineroar. If we can get rid of the Incineroar, we'll be golden. But Incineroar kind of does work against our entire team right now, I'm not going to lie. So let's see what Alolan Ninetales can do first and foremost. We'll bring it in. We'll get off that nice and powerful Moonblast to take out the Kabalion. I don't want to risk getting the Stealth Rocks up. There we go. Moonblast comes through. They may have stayed in Stealth Rock there just in case we Aurora Veiled, but I wasn't going to do that. Not, not, not now. Not anyhow. Uh, as the Kabalion does go down, which is fantastic. So now we're in a bit of a predicament because the Incineroar is a thing. There's the Nymph coming in, the uh, Jump Pluff. So I'm, I'm guessing they're thinking Jump Pluff outspeeds, but I'm pretty sure Ninetales outspeeds unless, unless I'm wrong. But let's go for a freeze dry just in case. I think I think I'm right. No, they actually do outspeed us and they go for a sleep powder once again. So Rod definitely didn't get the message about Smogon banning sleep. Which is fine. You know, not everyone got that message. I've battled plenty of people on Smogon like format and the you sleep moves. It's fine. I'm not too bothered at all. Um I guess I just try and break some sleep turns and begin for freeze dry. Because I don't want them to sub up. So they leech seed, which is fair enough. Leech Seed is fair enough. Are we going to wake up this first turn? We don't wake up the first turn, which is all right. Or the second turn, should I say, because the first turn was the turn we got Sleep Powdered. Now they're probably going to sub up, which is fair enough. So if they go for a substitute, it's fair enough. What, what can we do about that? Um, I'll tell you what we can do. We can go into our Indeedy right now. And the reason Indeedy is good... Oh, they actually withdraw. They withdraw. And they go Incineroar. So the Incineroar is a good play there. They are going to get some Stealth Rock Chip, which is great. And they do get the Intimidate off, which is also fine. Indeed, he's pretty good offensively right now. So we can go for a Hyper Voice. And I said all we need to do is weaken that Incineroar. And we'll be golden. So we get the Psychic Surge up, which is great. Psychic Surge is great. We get that Hyper Voice off, which is also great. We could Terra Dark to take the hit. But I don't think I need Indeedy to win this game. I think I just need to Hyper Voice this thing. So I am going to Hyper Voice it into Oblivion. And it should do a lot of damage. It nearly takes out the Incineroar as they go for a parting shot. So that Incineroar is dead now. It is dead now. So let's see what they do here. So are they going to go Jump Pluff? Because they can't... As long as I know the Ninetales are asleep, I know Rob plays by Sleep Clause traditionally. So I know they won't Sleep Powder or anything else. So Grizzo comes in. The Ursa Luna. The snow is going to stop. And they're going to get burned. 
So they are Flame Orb. Do we stay in an expanding force here? I think we do, don't we? I think we definitely stay in an expanding force. I could Healing Wish on the Alolan Ninetales, but I don't want to do that. As expanding force is going to do a lot of damage to this Ursa Luna, right? Not as much as I thought it would, but they go for a Facade, which is definitely going to take us out for a start. So that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. The uh, Jump of Can't Touch Us and the Cloister Maybe White Herb. I think Armor Rouge can finish up the game right now. I really think it can. So let's go into Armor Rouge. Like so. Let's get that expanding force off real quick. That should take out the uh, Earth Saluna from here. They can't switch in Incineroar because it will go down. They may fought, they may like sack it off right now um, to get a free switch in something else, which would be fair enough. Expanding force comes through. That should take out the uh, Earth Saluna as it does, which is fantastic. So Armor Rouge could pull this back for us. We're, we're a bit of a decline right now, but I'm pretty sure Armor Rouge can pull this back. It depends on what that Cloyster wants to do. In comes the Nymph, which is going to be the Jump Luff. So the Jump Luff, you know, is nearly on Death's Door. It can't sub up here. I don't think that I don't think they'll I don't think they'll sleep powder again. That'd be pretty poor sportsmanship. But let's go for it anyway. They go for the Leech Seed and they miss, which is unfortunate. But at the end of the day, it's not going to make much of a difference because this expanding force is taking out that Jump Luff right there. That jump up is going down regardless of the leech seed, so that's fine. Incineroar is dead. We've got Cloyster to worry about right now. Cloyster is a threat. So in comes the Clam Clam. The Clam Clam. I love that name. That's a really cool name. Really cool name. We get some stone, uh, the Stealth Frog digging in, so there's broken a potential Focus Sash. Do they Terror? Because they haven't Terrored yet. I say we go for an Expanding Force. There we go. Expanding Force should take out the Cloyster from here. No chance. No chance. No chance. So Armor Rouge... Expanding Force comes through. Armor Rouge is an amazing Pokemon. I'm so glad we got to pull off on the team. Uh, especially in Psychic Terrain. As the Incineroar does go down to the Stealth Rocks. And that's going to be the game. So GG, Rod. That was a pretty fun one. I enjoyed that. You really had me on the ropes there. But Armor Rouge in the end just came through for us. Really great. And I'm glad we kept that, um, that Ninetales asleep there as well. So that they couldn't sleep powder again with the Jump Luff. I think that was a brilliant strat. Worked out really nicely for Armor Rouge. So yeah, GG, Rod. That was a fun one. But anyway, here is the team. Try it out if you want to use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, of course, leave a like, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit.